How much? Price? This is the, I send this package to someone. Who? That is in India. Yeah. Yes, and we get scams. How much is it in total? <laughs> no, Mandala, Scala Chakra Mandala. In this video, we witness a tense encounter involving a police officer and a driver. The scene opens with a police officer instructing the driver to step out of the car. Come on, for two seconds, you jump out of the car with me and my cruiser, my car stop. Brilliant. Close your door and wait. You just hit me. The driver expresses confusion, explaining that he didn't break any traffic rules and denies any wrongdoing. The officer, clearly upset, dismisses the driver's claims and displays a disregard for surveillance activities. The officer insists that the driver hit his vehicle, to which the driver firmly denies. The driver defends himself, stating he possesses dash cam evidence to support his side. Honestly, I don't give a shit what surveillance you're doing. This is a motor vehicle stop. I don't care if you ran a red light. I don't care what you did. It doesn't give you the right to do it. He's claiming you hit his car, okay? <laughs> I did not hit his well, car. Well, that's not my problem. I right have now. a dash cam. Okay, that's great. His... You don't jump out of a car when you're on a car stop. His... It's an easy way to wind up, buddy. Then, a second officer arrives, familiar with the area, and questions the driver again. The driver reiterates his compliance with traffic laws and recounts the officer's aggressive behavior. How are you doing? Very good. Good. It was my area where this happened. So I'm the officer. What happened? I was following all traffic laws and then all of a sudden this guy was road raging on me. All right. The driver also presents the dash cam footage, revealing the officer's own aggression and the intersection where the alleged accident took place. This was the intersection where he claimed I hit him. Did you see me hit anyone? The video emphasizes the importance of dash cam evidence and showcases the driver's efforts to defend his innocence. In this video, a woman hatches a tricky plan to sneak into first class. With a faux pregnant belly cleverly strapped around her waist, she aims to exploit her supposed condition. But her scheme takes a turn when her seatmate catches on and stirs a commotion. Like, she's, she's not pregnant. pregnant. She's, she's not pregnant. Not, not 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 your business. She is pregnant. I'm gonna Thank take her up when questioned, the schemer stands up, revealing her fake belly to the passenger behind her. The ruse is exposed, and the woman challenges the motives behind the deceit. Annoyed, the trickster protests, and the neighboring woman takes her rightful seat in first class. Why does this matter to you? This doesn't affect you literally at all. Hey, look, look, no, oh, do oh. not look, do oh, not, ma it's trying to take my clothes off my flight. As a silver lining, the deceiver ends up with a whole row to herself, though it seems she came out on top in an unearned way. The incident showcases how schemes can unravel and justice finds its way, even in the sky. A woman uses an ATM while a man stands behind, feigning assistance but exuding impatience and nervousness. Suspicion arises as he tries to involve himself. His motives appear dubious as he continuously checks for witnesses. His behavior suggests ulterior motives, casting doubt on his intentions. Eventually, he departs, further arousing concern about his hidden agenda. A scammer approaches an ATM, discreetly planting a device in its cardholder. He then feigns assistance to a tourist, whose card gets swallowed due to the planted device. The scammer's accomplices join, creating confusion. Dangers include unauthorized card data capture, leading to financial theft, distraction tactics exploiting victims' vulnerability, and collaborative schemes heightening the deception's effectiveness. This incident underscores the peril of public spaces for financial transactions, urging vigilance, ATM inspection, 
and awareness of scams to mitigate risks and protect personal information. There was a man who played a tricky game. He acted as if he couldn't see, all to get some extra money. The video captures him moving around a town named Redding, seemingly sightless. But a closer look reveals the truth. His blindness is a pretense. The evidence at 535 and 539 clearly exposes his deception. A reporter, Rebecca Jarvis from ABC News, questions him sternly at 607. She asks why he took money that should have helped others and why he lied in the interview. His dishonesty caught up with him. Are you sorry for stealing that money from taxpayers? Why did you lie in the interview? Why did you lie in the interview, sir? The consequence? He found himself behind bars, paying for his fraud against the system and the taxpayers. This tale teaches us that dishonesty might work for a while, but sooner or later the truth shines through. In the video, he was presented with a situation where an individual attempted to deceive him by showcasing a counterfeit Rolex watch. Despite the passage of time, he remains uncertain about the legitimacy of the intent behind the encounter. I think it's actually might be 38 millimeters. And there's no paperwork, no box, nothing like that. Okay. Hmm. And, and so this is not yours, you said, because you're calling somebody? So you, like... Yeah, no, what's, my girlfriend's. It's your girlfriend's? Yeah. Okay. She was as he recounted the events in the clip, everything indicated to him that the watch was indeed a replica, from the demeanor of the person involved to the manner in which he discussed and elucidated his plan to acquire the timepiece by involving a dealer and obtaining accompanying documentation. This led him to the conclusion that the watch was not authentic. So there's a couple things that I... I mean, it looks spectacular, it looks really good. A couple things don't add up for me on this watch. Okay. The weight. A 36 millimeter, which is a little bit smaller than this because this is 38, it should weigh 102 grams just by itself. Just the watch without the bracelet. Just this the one band? is. Ju or just the bezel itself? Just the bezel itself okay. with the glass, okay, with the crystal on top, without the actual band. This one with the band being a bigger watch only weighs 111. Okay, it should be just the bezel at 102 if it's 36. This is 38. So there's there's something not right with the weight of this watch. Um, I I wouldn't even make you an offer on it. That's fine. Uh, you know I I don't I don't want to say it's not legit, but it it just numbers don't add up for me. Furthermore, during the interaction, the individual also sold him a piece of gold affixed to a chain. At the outset, the individual displayed doubt about the authenticity of the chain, which was later confirmed to be fake. Now on the gold here, uh, the chain is definitely 10 karat, I tested. I mean, uh, the cross, the chain on the other hand, just the clasps are 14 on it. The chain itself is not. And I tested right here and you can see it yourself how it actually changed the color. You can see copper or something so underneath. Not so, so it's just a lower carrier? Well, it, the chain itself is not gold. Whoever put the clasp at the end, they are gold. Okay, and there's a 585 number on actual clasp, and then there's a 14 number right here, but the rest of the chain is not. So if you want, I can make you an offer on a 10 carat uh, cross, but that's the only thing I would be interested in, you know? Yeah, because if, even if you look it up, the diameter 36, which I think this is actually a 38 and the way you measure from the side here all the way to the, to the crown, um, it should be 102. This one is so much heavier. But once again, I, even if I would do any kind of offer on this, I would have to take to the Rolex dealer to have them open it up. I don't have the right tool to do that. Yeah, because there's a certain thing inside of the Rolex, which I... Well, you just got to have the right tools and, you know, you got to open it and see if it has the right guts on it, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, if I come back with a certificate from them, when I be able to sell it? Absolutely. I'll make you an offer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sounds good, though. Yeah. And then, 
What do you want to do with this? You want me to make you an offer on this? So this is 4.4 grams at 10 carat. 75 bucks. Notwithstanding this, he proceeded to acquire the 10 carat gold across from the person, which was subsequently verified to be genuine. Depending on a condition, this one is very nice. You, from me, you're probably looking about 25 to 30 percent under, okay. roughly. Okay. You know, so I would love to see also what kind of movement is inside. So if you get any certification, they'll put that all out. If you go to like a Rolex dealer, you know. Now uh, here's one main thing with that watch. Even if you come back with any paperwork. Uh, since you already contact somebody in front of me that this is not your watch, yeah, I can't buy it from you. Yeah. So you would have to come with your girlfriend if it's hers, you know. You fine. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like... I'll be fine. All right. 20, 40, 60, 70, fine. Okay? All right. Thank Thanks, you man. Very much. Take care. So what do you think about the whole mess? Was he actually trying to scam the shopkeeper? Tell us in the comments. In this intriguing story, we follow the narrative of a daring criminal scheme that unfolds in a store. A man named Carter, a known criminal, enters the store with a stolen card. The cashier, sharp-eyed, becomes suspicious of the situation. As Carter tries to make a purchase, the cashier notices the card is stolen due to its magnetic stripe, not a chip. He attempts a cashback trick, raising further suspicion. The cashier cleverly stalls the transaction, prompting the criminal's frustration. When the card is declined, Carter suggests trying again without the cashback. The cashier remains vigilant, leading to a confrontation. He threatens the cashier and attempts to flee but is intercepted by a quick-thinking supervisor. This crime is foiled. However, two months later, Carter returns with an accomplice, targeting valuable whiskey stock. Their heist is successful, amounting to a substantial loss. Despite their aggressive tactics, they flee empty-handed when the store manager watches closely. The criminal gang's involvement becomes evident as additional members wait outside. It ends with the authorities investigating the gang, leaving us with an image of the two main culprits. The situation is profoundly concerning as it highlights the depths of inhumanity some individuals can stoop to. In this distressing incident, an 80-year-old pensioner fell victim to a heartless scammer who exploited his vulnerability. The scammer's deceitful act of posing as a helpful companion at an ATM showcases the callous disregard for another person's well-being. Uh, I, I don't know if this guy's trying to help this man or what. It's a bit suspicious. I was going to work it and he, he pushed in. Who and was, he, yeah, yeah, you've pushed you. up. You've no, pushed I can't. Yeah, he said he, there's someone who was busy with him. Have yeah. you got your money or anything? There was a man who was busy. Now it's canceled my car. No, don't videorize, me. Ah, don't videorize me. Don't videorize me. Why do you videorize me? Phone Why do you videorize me? Cancel your card, I promise you. Why do you videorize me? Because it looked very suspicious. No, I came. He was trying. I also came like okay. that. Yes. Yeah. Why are you videorizing me? I can always delete it. This incident underscores the urgent need for awareness, vigilance, and stricter measures against such exploitation of the elderly. It serves as a stark reminder that compassion and empathy are crucial to combat the growing prevalence of such heartless actions in society. In this video, we follow the tale of a camera with a unique ability. Instead of capturing images, it delves into people's bank accounts, deceiving them with false news of hefty refunds and impending job losses. The camera's sinister power unfolds as it targets unsuspecting individuals. A man eagerly anticipating a package falls under its influence. Are you f***ing scamming people? Are you scamming elderly people? Yes. Yes, you are. No, but yes, you are. What are you looking for here? Waiting for package. Huh? What are you looking for here? No, it is not. Huh? 
No. Hey. What do you mean no? Don't tell me f no. The camera exposes the dark reality of its operations, stealing from vulnerable targets like grandmothers and students. The ill-gotten gains are questioned. Where does the money truly originate? The scammer's tactics are revealed as they attempt to swindle a stranger with a fake refund claim. However, two vigilant guys intervene, promptly unmasking the con artist and thwarting his deceitful ploy. We, are, we already know, no. we know who you're, we know everything about you, and we know exactly what you're doing. Come on, how much, how much you're getting by picking up these packages and sending to your boss? Yeah, this, the, I send this package to someone. Who? Oh. That is in India. Yeah, so you, you take the package here and you send it to India, right? Laundering it overseas. Do you realize how many people are being stolen from? Grandmothers, students, people that are being... Yes, I don't know, sir, because I am just... I mean, where do you think the money comes from? They're not f***ing it out of their ass. This gripping narrative sheds light on the camera's malicious abilities and the heroes who courageously expose its wrongdoings. In this video, we observe a cunning card skimming and scamming operation near an ATM, as the scene unfolds, three individuals arrive in a rental car. Their actions are well coordinated. The first person takes the card from the victim at the ATM, while the second person acts as a distraction. The third member initially pretends to enter a nearby shop but quickly returns to the car. Observant customers notice the suspicious behavior and alert each other. The scammers target a lady approaching the ATM. With precision, the first person reclaims her card after a polite exchange. The second person distracts her while the card is discreetly taken from the machine. Meanwhile, the third person intervenes as a helpful bystander, further confusing the victim. Eventually, the lady realizes the theft, aided by a keen observer in a red hat. Although the scammers are known to local authorities, these crimes are challenging to prosecute. Thanks to quick action and the lady's resourcefulness, her card is blocked before significant damage can occur. In this video, we witness the unfolding drama of two shoplifters caught red-handed while stealing. The store's security cameras play a crucial role, capturing crystal clear footage of the crime. Two individuals walk into the store, their intentions hidden beneath ordinary appearances. Let's refer to them as green shirt, black shirt, and white shirt. Green shirt discreetly loads baby milk into their cart. The lady in the black shirt passes it to the white shirt. A well-practiced choreography conceals their thievery. They transfer the stolen goods into a hidden black bag, then hand it back to the white shirt. The trolley, once laden, is abandoned in the store. Green shirt, the visible culprit, is noticed by onlookers. As white shirt disappears, the stolen loot gets stashed into a waiting vehicle. Later they return, their strategy modified. Boxes of goods veil the baby formula as they sneakily exchange bags. Their routine is repeated with precision. Their actions remain unnoticed until the store's security systems capture their movements. During the next visit, they improvise again. Cornflakes and toilet paper camouflaging the milk formula, they maneuver their way through aisles. Meanwhile, security sharpens their vigilance. They retreat, evading suspicion for now. However, a day arrives when their luck runs out. Green shirt is stopped by security upon exit. The hidden stash of baby formula is discovered. Downstairs, the bag is unveiled, revealing the stolen treasure. Outside, their escape vehicle, loaded with thousands worth of formula, is exposed. The evidence in matching batch numbers solidifies their guilt. And thus, the elaborate scheme of stealing baby formula from the supermarket reaches its end, courtesy of vigilant surveillance and determined security personnel. Our story begins as the camera holder steps off a train on their way to JFK Airport. After disembarking the E-Train, they head toward the JFK Air Train. People bustle around. Just got off the E-Train, and I'm going to head to the JFK Air Train on my way to JFK Airport. Just at the entrance, a group of women approaches the person filming and the man beside them, seeking to buy tickets. The other man walks away, realizing the women don't need tickets. Can I have your subway ticket if you guys are leaving the JFK? However, the person recording is instantly approached by someone offering a deal. How much? How much is it? Five dollars. Save a dollar. Because they charge you a dollar more. The scam unfolds as the woman claims the ticket is cheaper when bought in a group of three. But this assertion is false. The man is savvy, knowing better than to fall for the ruse. Yeah. Five dollars, but you end up paying six dollars for the sale. Shouldn't you be giving them like a discount? Two, three dollars or something? The offered discount is a ploy targeting those unaware of the truth. 
The woman persistently offers the ticket at full price, hoping someone will seize it, seeking to save a few dollars. In November, the price go up. <laughs> November is like three months away. As the interaction continues, it's apparent that the woman's motive isn't genuine. Her misleading tactics highlight her intention to sell the ticket at its original cost, attempting to deceive passers-by and make a profit. From this incident, a lesson emerges. Not all offers are as they seem. Stay cautious and informed, especially when dealing with seemingly helpful strangers in unfamiliar settings. In this video, a man faces a confrontation at Disneyland revealing his recent attempt to scam someone. The video unfolds with the man having bought discounted Disneyland tickets, only to discover they were forged. Actually, bro, uh, we bought some off of you the other day. Where? Out in um, San Diego, and you scammed us, so... Who? You did, actually, so... I mean, you can either do it... No, no, you handed it right to my girlfriend, right from my SUV, so... I mean, I can... We can do it the easy way, you give I my give money you, back. I give your money back. Or I can get the cops involved, because I, I already have it on fraud. I'm sorry. And I got you on camera, bro. How much are you? Like, it was, it was three... It was... 250 yeah but. one night that's 200 yeah it's like 200 all right so are you a 50 more yeah you want to come in yeah yeah well. the scammer had pulled the same trick on this man while they were in san diego in this video we see how a traveler can fall into a tricky situation while exploring a foreign land a man is relaxing inside his car when a woman approaches offering to sell her golden ring i give you my gold they think i got something money well, what do you need gold what politely he declines stating he's focused on different priorities. She displays more jewelry, insisting on selling them at any price. To resolve the matter, he proposes a visit to a nearby pawn shop for a fair evaluation. So I, I'm gonna pawn it. We can go together to the pawn shop. The woman declines, prompting the man to speak in Russian. Realizing her scheme won't work, she retreats, crestfallen. The man chuckles off the attempted scam, later engaging in a humorous chat about languages, do you know where I'm from? No, I understand you speak very Yeah, I don't English. understand. Rupa Ruski Gavarish? Ah, tu Ruskish. Huh? Yeah? You done? <laughs> this story illustrates the importance of vigilance while traveling and being aware of such deceptions that can cross one's path. A man found himself in need of gas money. He handed over an object he hoped would hold value, a chain. His friend, an expert, inspected it closely. Immediately, doubts arose. The chain lacked the heft of real gold, its clasp having an unusual gap. The first chain bore the mark of 18 carats, but the expert wasn't convinced. It's money and he gave me that. Okay, so, I hope you didn't yeah. give him too much. Not a lot. Yeah. Okay, so the chain is not gold, definitely not okay. gold. Yeah. And the first, and it is marked 18 carat, um, the way it's stamped, not just for your own future. When somebody gives you a chain like this, even that you don't have a test or anything, first thing that you look, see that little loop yep. that holds the clasp with the actual chain? It's got a break in it. You can, it has a break in it. You can literally separate it with your fingers. If it's a real chain, it will Pull be welded. Yeah. Because nobody wants to lose right. this kind of caliber chain when it's, it's 18 real gold, yeah, exactly real gold, yeah. so that that's your first giveaway that it's probably not okay another chain came into focus it looked similar yet upon examination discolored spots hinted at its falseness so that's worthless that's three dollars there yep. you know this is marked 18k this was part of the same deal yeah so uh I'm gonna test it. It looks it looks like could be, but there's some pitting going on here in this coloration that tells me that it's not. Um. The expert embarked on a simple test, etching the surface to reveal the underlying truth. The metal didn't react as gold should. Its color even transformed to a suspicious green. And it's also marked 18K, and also that's like the first thing that immediately kind of raises the flag as well. And it's not. 
see how it changes color to the green on the inside? Oh yeah. Yeah, so that tells me that it's not real gold. And as soon as now I wipe it, you'll see a different metal inside in that spot that I etched it. A second layer emerged as the expert wiped away the surface, exposing the chain's true composition, a far cry from precious gold. The lesson became clear. Both chains were nothing but cheap imitations. The man's hope of gas money vanished as he had unknowingly given away worthless pieces. And look how it darkened. It's like copper inside or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, man, you got another $2 here, so... Give me five bucks? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Ah, cool, man. That's what I said. I hope you didn't give him too much, you know? The video served as an educational tale, teaching viewers to be cautious and knowledgeable about the characteristics of real gold. Weight, clasp quality, and signs of discoloration were unveiled as the secrets to differentiating genuine gold from deceptive fakes. In Nepal, being cautious and a bit skeptical is wise when someone overly friendly approaches. YouTuber Carl Rock unveils a common scam prevalent in Nepal, where locals pretend to be friendly but end up tricking tourists into pricey art schools or asking for money. The biggest scam here in Nepal is the friendly local scam. We think you've met a friendly local, but at the end it ends up taking you to like an overpriced, expensive art school or just outright asking you for money. These street hustlers target strangers, and Carl, who's aware of these schemes, aims to expose them. Hey, namaste, bye. Namaste, oh, it's been Nepali. Carl encounters a friendly local who strikes up conversation with familiarity. They claim to be from the same place as him and invite him to see their art school. Hey, brother, good morning. Namaste, G, how are you, man? I'm fine, thank you. Where are you from, brother? New Zealand. Oh, where about? Auckland? Where yeah, man, from? Auckland. How did you know? Man, I know I have a friend from Auckland. Though. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Actually, she's a girl, though. Me, I study art. Really? I do paintings. Oh. You know, mandala, Scarlet Chakra mandala? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I'll show you my work, man. Despite numerous similar invitations, Carl realizes their game. He agrees to visit an art school just to demonstrate the scam. Well, I have a shop, actually. Acha. Yeah. And... Uh, Yoga, and, uh, you're out here to get customers, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? I might show you my school. I do, you have a look. At the school, the scam unfolds. They try to emotionally manipulate him into buying their art first quoting high prices, then offering reduced rates with a tale of family support. How much does this one cost? It depends, this, brother, on Something like, big like that, yeah. This one's cost 390, my friend. 390 rupees? 390 dollars. Oh, okay. Not Nepali rupee, but dollar. All right, 40 said rupee. Yeah, it's like a three months work, you know. It's to be honest, I get it, because you're helping, I get also 1,500 or something help from my family. Because, brother, we it's got a family, you know. Hey, you get 10, look 15%, after, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's because we got to look after family, we do our work Not here, only they we tell you yeah. honest. Carl remains unyielding exposing their tactics to his viewers. He resists their pressure, haggling down prices to show their manipulation. I gotta shop you around, go man. Now 50, 60 dollar, you go this, pop bar, this you it's just like that. I'm gonna shop around, this man. This is 1,500 rupees. Beautiful, thank you. Ultimately, Carl educates his audience about recognizing these scams, ensuring others won't fall prey to these cunning traps. In a tale of imperfection, a woman faces a high-stakes situation Having encountered a scammer previously, she now spots a different guise. The vigilant bank teller instantly alerts authorities, unraveling the scammer's plot. The teller's quick action, despite not being directly involved, impresses. Is she, is she here in a car? I don't know if she's here in a car, but she went to another branch, and then they called here and said that they were coming here. Okay. My, mar my manager, who's over Bermuda, Volusia County, said that there's a warrant out for her arrest for a person named clients in Bermuda County. He sent me the detective's name. Okay. The plot thickens as the scammer, Christine Tyler, is questioned by an officer. Her facade crumbles as he reveals a warrant for her arrest. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. What, what's your name? I'm sorry? What's okay. your name? Christine what? Tyler. Christine Tyler, okay. Siler. Do you have Siler? Mm -hmm. Do you have ID with you? Mm -hmm. She does. Yep. Can I? Can, from the Tyler link. Okay, cool. Thank you. For information, you might have a warrant out of Brevard County. Yeah, so we're just going to confirm that real quick, and then we'll let you know, okay? Yeah. Though feigning surprise, she's cornered. Arrested, she tries to justify her actions by citing support for her grown kids. I want to help my kids, basically. You want to help your kids? How many kids you got? 
You got four well, kids. I have three. I, my daughter was my daughter passed away three years ago. Okay. Do you have custody of your kids? They're, they're in their twenties. Oh, they're all in their twenties. Okay. So are you still having to support them? No, no, no. I said help them. The truth emerges from her sketchy past, entangled in traffic and drug charges. Released on bond, she's reapprehended for organized fraud after an investigative pursuit. In this unfolding drama, imperfections and consequences collide, highlighting the value of keen eyes and swift action. In this video, we witness a woman's bizarre behavior unfold. With determination, she repeatedly attempts to stage accidents with a car. As the vehicle enters the street, the elderly lady cunningly sprawls across the road, feigning a collision. The driver, astutely perceiving the act, gently reverses to avoid any fuss. Undeterred, the woman rises and tails the car. She strikes it with her fist and dramatically tumbles to the pavement. Once more, she springs up, delivering a forceful kick to the car before dramatically plummeting again. Despite her theatrics, no one seems to take notice. Realizing her efforts bear no fruit, she discreetly abandons the scene. This curious incident raises questions about her intentions and the underlying motives behind her peculiar performance, leaving us to ponder the mysteries surrounding her unusual antics. In this video, a trickster takes a couple on a journey, having convinced them to aid him. Along the path, two men wave them down, posing as police and probe about their newfound tourist companion. Now here, Hello, no? police. Good afternoon. Can I see your passport, please? Oh, ID? Passport. Why you make a problem to the tourist? Oh, yes. You have a problem with him? Excuse me. Doubts arise when the man recording the scene requests the officer's IDs. Sensing trouble, the couple departs, realizing they needn't be fooled. Passport. Can I see your ID again? In this video, scammers reveal their heartless nature. The scene unfolds as a possibly confused elderly man interacts with a cashier. As the old man counts his change, the situation becomes uncertain. He receives his money and leaves. But as the story returns, the man reappears, accusing the cashier of giving him only $6 instead of 10. That's only $6. Six dollars? Yes, that's what I got. The man appears insistent and upset. The cashier explains that he placed a $10 bill in his pocket, which the old man vehemently denies tampering with. The name's... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That, that's, I didn't put it there. But you that's... put it there. Oh, okay. Can I have it back? The story takes a twist as the man's story crumbles, revealing he's engaging in this act for some extra cash due to his financial struggles. So why do you do this here? Because I'm broke. Whether this confession is genuine or a ploy to avoid further conflict remains unclear. The ease with which he maneuvers between interactions is concerning, hinting at possible repetition of such schemes. The hope lingers that he won't repeat this deceitful act elsewhere. In a heart-wrenching tale, a young woman fights both leukemia and pancreatic cancer. But the police allege she's been deceiving everyone. I want people to live. I want to live. You know, I want, I want there to be a cure. Maddie Russo, a 19-year-old student, spoke of her cancer battle. They found a mass on my pancreas, and I had stage 2 pancreatic cancer at just 19 years old. She bravely documented her journey on social media, sharing her treatment and even freezing her eggs before chemo. Before I even started chemo, I harvested my eggs with the OBGYN, um, and basically it's just to, you're kind of like freezing your eggs. She claimed leukemia and a football-sized spine tumor, raising $37,000 on GoFundMe. Moved by her story, Louis Frillman donated $1,000. The police, however, arrested her in Iowa, labeling it a scam. The hoax was first questioned by doctors who noticed irregularities in her chemo image. She was a, you know, a very young person that appeared to be in a serious amount of trouble. She was totally believable. Real medical ports are sterile and secured, unlike hers. Talking to a real cancer patient, Anna Kaur Kovetsky revealed the true appearance of such a port. The chest port is actually like a like a little port uh, under my skin. It was uh, inserted by a surgery. Absolutely. GoFundMe refunded all donations, stating their intolerance for platform misuse. In a little store, a man gazes at gleaming gold pieces in the window. He carefully studies each one, spot by spot, as his patient customer waits. Time passes. The customer fidgets, growing anxious, but his friend hurries in with more jewelry. Tension builds until, finally, the store owner intervenes. Swiftly, he recognizes the fake jewelry, tossing them away. 
thankfully things don't worsen. There's a brave man who stumbles upon a group of scammers preying on unsuspecting tourists. A voice from the shadows chides him for interfering, warning about stolen money. Because you're stealing yeah, money. Yeah, it's my problem. It's my problem. You're stealing money off people. Undeterred, he starts to trail the scammers, capturing their actions on camera. As they confront him, he stands his ground, refusing to be touched. The scam they run is deceptively simple, yet wickedly cunning. Hey, don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm No, no. It's they spot clueless tourists, asking for signatures and then demanding donations. Recognizing the injustice, the man decides to take matters into his own hands. He shadows the scammers, a silent guardian protecting tourists from falling victim. Even as he waits to check in somewhere, he continues his stealthy mission. With unwavering determination, he spoils their schemes and safeguards the unknowing visitors. And just when you think the story is over, the plot thickens. The scam artists venture into a convenience store, leaving us wondering what the vigilant man's next move will be. In this video, we witness how some individuals attempt insurance scams. A woman finds herself in an emotional state as she describes an incident where someone purposefully stepped in front of her car. Despite her claims of driving at a mere two miles an hour, she struggles to prove her innocence to onlookers. This gentleman stepped in front of my car. I didn't see him. I'm so sorry. you're the driver? But I was going okay. two miles an hour. However, the situation takes a twist when the supposed victim insists on insurance money. Only upon reviewing security footage does the truth emerge. The footage shows the man intentionally falling onto the woman's car and deceiving others into thinking it was an accident. The security team watches the video and exposes the scammer's ploy. Thankfully, the woman's innocence becomes clear. This tale serves as a cautionary reminder of how deception can be unveiled leaving us eager for the next revelation that promises to astonish. The gravity of a situation refers to its immense seriousness and potential consequences. It signifies the profound impact that a particular event or circumstance holds, often implying significant risks or far-reaching implications. The term is used to highlight the urgency and importance of addressing the situation appropriately told me that it was because of COVID that he wasn't doing in-person viewings and showings. I showed the rental agreement to my parents, I showed it to my boyfriend, and they all said it looked pretty legit. I'm gonna head over and see the new place. I just got scammed out of like over $2,000. And now we're seeing if somebody lives in unit one. I've got sheriff's the department. sheriff's department with me. We'll get to the bottom of this. And there is an actual guy who lives in unit one, so. That's, <laughs> this is so messed up, guys. In essence, it underscores the need for immediate attention and decisive action due to the severe and potentially irreversible outcomes that could result if the situation is not managed effectively. In this intense scenario, a woman's deceptive actions reach a critical juncture as she falsely associates with an organization, attempting to defraud a man and his friend. But, but you don't want to go to that creative, you want to go to the first floor to the, to the coffee place. Jasně. Dobrý den. Uh, tahle paní se vydává za uh, Národní združení pro neslyšící a tělesně. Ne, 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 ne. Teď jste mi to dala. V pořádku. V pořádku. Tahle paní se vydává za hluchoněmou. Ale najednou mluvíte. Aha. Takže a tady sbírá podpisy od lidí, kteří následně píšou částky. No počkejte, tak vy jste nejdřív za náma přišla a teď se s náma nechcete bavit. The tension escalates as the friend captures the unfolding drama on camera, meticulously revealing the woman's fraudulent intentions. Despite her efforts to manipulate the situation, the man adeptly dismantles her ruse, unearthing her true motives. Ne, slečno, vy před náma nemusíte utíkat. Vy nám snad před náma nemusíte utíkat. Ne, ale protože vy, vy se vydáv, jako tohle, tohle nemůžete dělat. To já nevím, co to znamená. A vy mi rozumíte? Nerozumím. Tu rozumím. Co, ta, co, co to znamená, že já jsem byl? Jako ču... yes. Jako tohle. Yes. To jsem já? Aha. 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 Ne, 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 Nebudete, můžete na mě šát, ale na, na kameru ne. Lesmo tranquilo, lesmo tranquilo. Nekřičte na mě. Bacha, bacha kolo, jo? 
the situation intensifies when the woman resorts to violence, striving to maintain her facade. Hello, 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 hello. Clint? You come. Si. Takže vy, vy teď chcete to uhrát na to, že jsme, vám, že, že jsme po vás chtěli sex za peníze? Působím na vás jako někdo, kdo chtěl sex za peníze s váma? To vyznělo zle, tak jsem to nemyslel, jako, ale na Václaváku přece musí být policajt. Ty. Není to jenom pražský, pražská věc, jako tohle se děje i v jiných městech, já sám osobně jsem to viděl v Jihlavě. A Důvod, proč jsme teď s paní prošli půlku Prahy, byl ten, že jsme doufali, že někde narazíme na strážníka, aby uh, aspoň jako dal blokovou pokutu za to, že vlastně chce podvádět a nejen turisty, ale hlavně důvěřivý Čechy, což třeba mě osobně je fakt líto. Tak tamhle běží. The gravity of the situation deepens as her feigned disability, portraying her as deaf mute, abruptly gives way to her unexpected speech, underscoring the complexity and urgency of the deception. Národní združení pro neslyšící a tělesné postižené lidi a chudé děti. Chceme otevřít mezinárodní centrum, děkujeme. Toto je samozřejmě podvod, nic takového neexistuje. Slečna, kterou jste právě teď viděli, se vydávala za neslyšící, nakonec se rozmluvila. Tady vidíte, si slečna vyplňuje různé částky, které se vás pak snaží přesvědčit, abyste jí taky dali 200-400 korun. Tak se určitě nenechte nachytat. As the video unfolds, a woman's car rests at a traffic light, while a truck halts behind her. Questions arise about an insurance scam or an accident. Abruptly, a truck pulls up beside the woman's car as it begins to roll backward. Despite earlier engagement of the brakes, the car starts moving only upon the truck's arrival. Despite the blaring horns, the woman's car eventually bumps into the truck. Here's where things take a twist. Astonishingly, the woman shifts blame to the truck driver, accusing them of the collision. This puzzling logic baffles onlookers since the entire incident is captured on camera. The man behind the truck pulls out his dash cam footage to reveal the sequence of events. The evidence compels the woman to cease her baseless accusations and abandon her claims against the innocent truck driver. The video concludes, leaving viewers pondering whether the woman's actions were a scam attempt or simply lacking in common sense. In this video, we witness a man attempting to squeeze money out of a car driver. The man tries to wedge himself in front of the car, insisting on payment. Fortunately, the car owner has a dashboard camera that clearly reveals there was no contact between them. Frustrated by his failure to extort money, the man intentionally collides with the car and speeds away. Determined, he grips onto the car's wipers to halt the driver, but eventually lets go and escapes. This situation highlights a scam that many might easily fall prey to, which is truly disheartening. It's a reminder to always stay cautious and be aware of such schemes that can catch people off guard. In this video, we observe an assertive lady approaching a house and knocking loudly on its entrance. She claims that the homeowner's dog bit her dog, resulting in a veterinary visit. Hello? Hi, do you have a dog? Yes. Okay, your dog bit my dog last night. I have to go to the vet for it because you fucked up his leg. So, do you want to come out here and talk to me? The homeowner emerges, curious about the situation. The lady describes her dog's appearance, but it doesn't match the homeowner's dog. The homeowner reveals their dog's true appearance, which contradicts the lady's account. This revelation dismantles the lady's deception, leaving her flustered. What kind of dog do I have? Uh, I don't know, a brown one? No, I have a white toy Maltese, so get the f*** off my porch. The homeowner's clever recognition of the inconsistency exposes the scam, ending the encounter on a triumphant note. In this video, we see how some folks are ready to go to any length to carry out their deceitful plans. A dash cam captures an incident where a man fakes being hit by a car. He pretends he's injured, hoping the driver will return and pay him. But luck is on the driver's side as their dash cam reveals the truth. The man waves his arm, creating a loud noise, causing the car to turn around. However, the scammer's plot unravels as he rushes over, feigning pain and shouting that he's been hit. The video alone is evidence enough to clear things up, but the scammer's dramatic performance might make anyone flustered and lead to his escape. It's baffling how some get away with such acts, yet understandable how things can get muddled in the midst of all this chaos, in the heart of Paris, an all-too-frequent incident happened. A scammer, 
his cunning eyes searching for prey, sets his sights on unsuspecting tourists. A vigilant observer takes note and steps into the scene. With a casual approach, he engages the tourists, unraveling the scam's threads. The scam artist, ensconced in his car, identifies the tourists. The conversation begins innocently, offering information like a friendly local. Yet his true intentions lie in a sleek con involving supposedly exquisite menswear, a far cry from quality. Turista, da? Da. Io direttore moda, moda italiana. Moda, da. E ta na curta ca film emporio. Da. The camera rolls, capturing the unfolding drama. A clever twist awaits as the tourists decline the gift that conceals the snare. Malut, I'm flying. Thank you. No place. I apologize. The con artist's frustration is palpable as he speeds away in his car, defeated. The tourists, unscathed but wiser, remain. The cycle continues as the con artist, foiled but undeterred, sets his sights on fresh prey, leaving us to ponder the web of scams targeting Parisian tourists. Meeting the money gang for the first time in 2017, they calmly observe the money hustle gang, who hustle tourists at an exchange office. Footage shifts to Janek, who nervously films the scene years later. Janek reflects on his anger management and their deceitful operation. <laughs> Introducing a new gang member, a liar and thief. A regular day finds the scammer warning tourists and leading them to a fake exchange. Janek approaches, confronts them about their scam. The liar denies having Belarusian rubles, but modern tech exposes his deception. Do you speak English? Yes. Do you speak English? Yes. Perfect. Can I see the Belarusian rubles you were just offering to people? What? Can I see the Belarusian rubles you were just offering to people? Yes. I do not speak Turkish. You're not Turkish. I know that. It's okay. 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 I know what you do. What is it? <laughs> I know what you do. It's okay. You offer to people to exchange it better, right? Than this, this exchange rate. Okay. Yes, I don't do. know what to say. No, you do. That. My wife feels for them. No, you're not. You're lying. What? You don't have Belarusian rubles in your pocket. You do not have yeah, Belarusian rubles. No, 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 no. Come, no come I, don't know. I don't know what is Belarusian. Come. You have it in your pocket. In my pocket. But what is your interest? You are political. Right? Why are you lying? I don't know. Uh, you you don't just know me. me. You just, I don't know you. What, what happened? Well, my name is Yannick Rubesh. I'm a journalist. Okay, my name I'm is an investigative. Marius. Okay. Lovely. What's your name? Me? Ahmed. Ahmed, right. My job okay. is to catch people who commit crimes in the city. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and so if you can tell me what happened. Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, he asked us if you can, uh, if you want to change money, money on the on the exchange. exchange market and we said yes because yes. the other one was closed and uh -huh. yeah yes and we got scams me and the job for the exchange uh -huh. add money add both money. Both. yes both. no problem janek reveals their past scam and interviews victims gang members brag about stealing. In the world of precious metals, gold stands out as a valuable commodity. People are skilled at recognizing its true worth, but there's a swarm of counterfeit goods flooding the market, making it harder to spot the genuine. Our story unfolds with a woman showcasing what appears to be fake gold from an online store called Wish, known for its dubious quality. The seasoned buyer immediately senses the deception, yet the scammers press for a quick deal. Suggesting a visit to a pawn shop for authentication, they dodge the idea, setting off alarm bells. So, do you guys ain't got no problem? Let's go to the pawn shop and get it tested. Yeah, um, it depends on where you want to go, but it yeah. don't matter anywhere. BJ's Jewelry is right here in town. The plot thickens as they employ a baby as a distraction tactic. Despite the pressure, the potential victim stands firm, refusing to fall for the sham. You have a better hustle. Go get a job for your baby, man. Quit selling fake jewelry. Tempers flare, and in a bustling restaurant, the con artists face a stern rebuke, ultimately exposing their fraudulent scheme. In this video, we witness a failed scam captured by a dashboard camera. A man dressed in a helmet and suit stands by a crosswalk. A car halts in front of him, suggesting he's about to cross. Unexpectedly, he leaps into the car but stumbles dramatically. Confusion and profanity follow as the man's ploy is unveiled. Astonishingly, his plan was to feign being hit by the car, but it all goes awry. To the rescue comes the car's driver who springs out of the seat to confront the scammer. 
Revealing his dash cam, the driver displays proof of innocence. The would-be scammer's facade crumbles, and in a panic, he flees the scene. The dash cam has thwarted the deceitful plan, highlighting a valuable advantage of having one installed, the power to expose dishonesty in unexpected moments. In this video clip, we witness a man approaching a house, under the impression it's empty. Despite no visible signs, he insists he thought the house was up for sale. Engaging through the doorbell camera, the homeowner refutes the claim, clarifying that the adjacent house is for sale. Yeah, what, what you need? I mean, I asked if somebody stay here. I thought the house what was for mean, sale. No, no. Yeah, we're we not selling the house. You're not selling the house no more? You, oh, you mean the house next door, right? The man, puzzled, retreats, scanning his surroundings. The man returned later, attempting a break-in, though unrecorded. In this video, there is a lesson about being cautious while traveling. Doubting people's intentions might seem cynical, but it's important to be careful. A YouTuber is our protagonist, who gathers videos exposing scams targeting unaware tourists. A guy at a cafe catches their attention. He's not sipping coffee, but luring tourists with better exchange rates. However, he tricks them by offering the wrong money assuming they won't notice. He told me he will give me check money and he gave me the money and somebody else came and uh, told me that uh, uh, take a picture of me so it was really fast. The tourists follow him to his exchange and fall for his trick. But our YouTuber doesn't stay silent. They record evidence and call the police, stopping the scammer in his tracks. It's a victory against fraud, reminding us to be cautious when exploring new places so even though cynicism isn't ideal, staying alert helps us travel smarter and safer. In this video, we witness a tricky brake check scheme. The deceiver aims to trigger an accident during a tight merge. The innocent driver must brake heavily, creating room. Swiftly, the schemer taps his brakes not once, but twice. The first attempt avoids a collision due to the vigilant driver. Yet the second attempt leads to impact. They both pull over to resolve the matter. Without a dash cam, this would be a simple fender bender where blame could shift. Yet with the front driver's camera, the entire deceit is unveiled. Thus, the driver evades potential turmoil through this recorded encounter. In the realm of traffic accidents, truth can be a puzzle. Different incidents emerge, no one admits blame. But in this video, vigilance prevails. A dash cam proves key. As the driver journeys forth, the car ahead reverses, colliding gently. Yet the blame oddly shifts as the driver is accused of crashing. Stepping out, the driver surveys their vehicle. The accuser, acting, exits their car, ready to pin fault. Amid the tussle, the accuser retreats for info, mirrored by the driver. Tempers flare. They vacate the road center. The driver calmly shares their version. The police, partial, shift towards the accuser. Then, the dash cam's tail unfolds. Laughter erupts from the driver as truth dawns. Armed with evidence, they craft a digital rebuke for the scheming accuser, closing a chapter of deceit. In this video, a dash cam captures a customer's complaint about undelivered food. The person claims their order never arrived, suggesting that the driver either stole it or dropped it off at the wrong place. In such cases, customers receive refunds and drivers can be banned. The driver, upset by the accusation, receives a message from the customer alleging non-delivery. Doubting the customer's intent, the driver believes the company wouldn't send such a message lightly. Though a credit might come, the driver fears for their job security. Uh, I just got a message that said that you said I did not deliver your food. That's, I mean, I'm pretty sure that ass won't just send me that message. And, and I get it, you probably want a credit or something like that, but you put my job at jeopardy. This, and how I know it is because this is the only delivery I just did. I just dropped my kids off at karate practice and did this one delivery. And they said it was the exact time the customer said they did not receive their order. I handed you your order in your hand. You, you received it out of my hand, right or wrong? Did I receive it? Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes? This particular delivery becomes crucial as it's the only one after dropping off the driver's kids at karate practice. The delivery time matches the customer's complaint, yet the driver insists they personally handed over the order. The video depicts the driver explaining their situation to the homeowner, defending their action against the message's claim. 
In the realm of hit-and-run scams, scammers are becoming more inventive, seeking fresh ways to ensnare unsuspecting victims. Yet, their tactics don't always succeed, as dash cams can conveniently establish innocence in such scenarios. A recurring target of these schemes, our protagonist encounters a situation where two women halt their car, having supposedly hit a curb. Put your the lights on! Wait, wait. The car lights flicker, and then enters a man in a silver vehicle, abruptly obstructing their path. He adamantly prevents their departure, leading to a verbal altercation. Oddly, in both instances, the driver hasn't actually collided with them. Regardless, both parties insist that he stop, growing furious when he declines. What's up? Oh my god! What's your problem? What are you doing? Fortunately, everything is captured by his trusty dash cam, eliminating any he said she said dispute. Remember, cameras speak the truth. In the YouTube video by Luke from Travel with Luke, we witness a humorous yet cautionary tale about dealing with street vendors in a foreign land. Luke encounters a corn seller on the roadside. The tourist attempts to purchase a meal of roasted corn, but communication becomes a mess. The vendor seems confused, struggling with the price and quantity. The language barrier and the vendor's seemingly intentional misunderstanding contribute to the confusion. How much? Price? Uh, a pound? How much? Luke settles on buying one pound of corn, but as he hands over money, the vendor sneakily takes more cash than agreed. Luke is left bewildered. One pound? Five, 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 five pounds. Five, five, oh, okay, yeah. Five, five. I'll have one, thank you. Wow. One, two, one, two. Three, four. So what, <laughs> so what are you doing? You're uh... Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Five pounds? You can have a... Uh, that's fine. No, no, no. No, you have. You have. <laughs> no, you have, you have. No. What is that one? Oh, 50. <laughs> okay. The incident highlights the importance of understanding the local language and culture when traveling. The mishap serves as a reminder for viewers to learn a few phrases before embarking on journeys to avoid falling into similar misunderstandings. In this story, we follow a man's journey through Spain. As he strolls around, he spots another guy near a gate. The guy has a couple of bracelets in his hand. He kindly offers the man a free bracelet, but something goes wrong. The bracelet accidentally slips through a sewer grate. They exchange greetings. The man is from the United States and the local guy seems cheerful. A friend named Samba is introduced. The situation takes a twist when the guy offers another free bracelet, putting it on the man's wrist. Yes. I'm from Africa. What? Where are you from? From the United States. Oh, very like and people. How are you doing? You happy? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? This is my friend Samba. I'm not this free for you. Look, oh. Look. oh, I'm sorry, man. It fell. You, this free you. He threw it in the air. This for you. It's free? Uh, for me. He then suggests buying one for his wife, but the man declines, only wanting one. Confusion arises as the man thought it was a gift. This for your wife. No, I don't need two. Only one is good. No, I know nothing. This for your wife. Give me something, please, for you. But you told me it was free. It was a gift. Yeah, I sold you some money. I don't have any money with me. Sadly, he explains he doesn't have any money. He returns the bracelet. Suddenly, the situation escalates. The scammer attempts to grab the man's camera but fails. Uh, but I don't have any money here. Here, you can have it back. I'll give it back to you. Here, no, give, 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 give this back. No, this, this camera and this back. No. Why? Uh, excuse me. This Eventually, the man decides to give the bracelet back and urges the scammer to rethink his actions. In this captivating video caught by a ring doorbell camera, a young girl is attempting to snatch a delivered package from someone's residence. A car halts in front of the house and a girl emerges in haste. She swiftly seizes the package and endeavors to retreat to the waiting car. Alas, the driver speeds away before she can embark, causing her to inadvertently drop the package. Just as the homeowner emerges, the thief is apprehended. Shouts ensue, but the determined homeowner seizes the miscreant. Words are exchanged, with the homeowner informing the thief of impending police involvement. As tension heightens, we trust justice will prevail, and the pilfered packages shall be restored to safety. In this video, we find ourselves in a pawn shop, where a cunning lady is attempting to deceive her way into some quick cash. A seasoned lady walks in, presenting a fresh box. But alas, upon unveiling it, the box holds only newspapers and bricks. 
Oh my god. Well, better newspaper than bricks. Well, that's really interesting. Okay, never mind. Oh, the tricks they play. However, her trickery doesn't cease there. She inquires about their money-giving policies, feigning innocence. She even pulls out a gift card claiming it's worth $2,000. The shop owner, though intrigued, is no fool. He inspects the cards, revealing they're expired. How much of the, va the actual retail value do you, are you able to lend on it, like a percentage? Engaged in a sort of verbal duel, the lady carries on as if she's meticulously planned her escapade. The video sheds light on how certain individuals endeavor to orchestrate insurance scams, displaying their creative yet deceitful strategies. As the video unfolds, a man records his journey through Budapest's bustling city center, eager to discover its treasures on camera. He strolls up to a meat station, where a friendly woman showcases an array of delights. In Budapest, he learns about the Central Hall, a vibrant marketplace for selling and buying various vegetables. I'm in Budapest, we're going to this uh, great Central Hall, where uh, people can come to either sell or buy different veggies. Hi, can I order? Uh, no, one langos, yes. Just here. Speaking in broken English, he attempts to order, and the woman exploits his unfamiliarity by persuading him to try a local specialty, langos. Trusting her, he inquires about the cost, and she calculates the total. Uncertain if his card will cover it, he hesitates. Despite his suspicions, he pays, sensing a scam. How much is it in total? 4,100. Uh, 4, okay. Anyway, okay. Uh, can I pay by card? No, I don't know if there's enough. Are you sure? Okay. Most likely we got scammed over there. It's really worth it. But they really priced me way above the price. Later, he reflects on the experience, realizing he'd been charged a steep price for an inauthentic item, a lesson learned in the heart of the city. In this intriguing tale from the bustling streets of Prague, two tourists, their faces filled with anticipation, withdraw money from an ATM. Unbeknownst to them, a cunning scammer lurks nearby, pretending to make his own withdrawal. This crafty trickster is eyeing their cash for his deceitful ploy. Later, he approaches them, displaying a handful of foreign currency, tricking them into believing he's just another tourist. The tourists hesitate, sensing something amiss. A brave onlooker hiding behind the banner intervenes. A commotion ensues, the scammer's facade shattered, Stop, 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 stop. He, just, he, he robbed me. Don't go, yeah, don't go away. Him. Don't go away. Yeah. Give him my money back. There you go. There you go. Can we? No. Well, uh, well, 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 no. He did, did, you, that too. did you get everything? No. no. Did, you get all your money? no. did you get everything? You have everything, right? 2000. No. Listen, madam, madam. No. My, can you, my name is Honest Guide. Can you look us up and write us an email? You have, no. you have... The person dressed in sportswear from a chance encounter earlier urges the victims to seek help online. The scammer's true identity is exposed, his futile attempt to escape in the metro thwarted. Ticket inspectors turn a blind eye, and the scammer slips away. Good, Foreign. Can now go to the police. Let's go to the police. Foreign. Uh, uh, the police, I, the police. I, the call, police? I call on the police. Call police. Okay. Yeah, call police. I call police. Huh? Do it. Iga. No, that's not police. Uh, Major, right? Major, Hungary. That's okay, whatever. Then, uh, Why you come to Prague? Yeah, Why? tourist. No tourist. Hungary, Major. Okay, okay, okay. I call the uh, judge, my judge. Judge? Oh, yeah, judge, yeah. no problem. I, my judge, I uh, have problem. Too much money, give me. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, she's bad. Is it normal to cheat first? Ah, don't you know? 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 The video concludes with a check word lesson and a promise to return next week. 
leaving viewers captivated by this real-life tale of deception and heroism on the charming streets of Prague. In this video, I'm walking along as the scam unfolds. A man approaches me asking where I'm from. He guesses Vienna, but I correct him with Melbourne. He inquires if the woman with me is my wife, and I affirm it. He then offers a strange gift, claiming it's for fun because I'm African. Yeah. Nice. Hey. Where are you from? Australia. Ah, David Alaba. Vietnam? Pardon? Where in Austria? Melbourne. Ah, that's all. Is your wife your girlfriend? Why? 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 Nice, eh? <laughs> Time for him to shoot his shot. One for yellow. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's no one for free. That's my brother because you're a playboy. Right. Because Europe, Africa, black and white. <laughs> all right. It's for s**t. Tonight, bunga bunga. Yeah, man, I don't have any money. Yeah. I, I, I know your game, but I don't, I don't have any money, man. I decline, but he persists. Watching closely, I catch his friend attempting the same scam on another couple. I move away to avoid being noticed. What? I don't have any money. No, no, bro. One wife, two wife. <laughs> You're crazy. Only one. Only one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, little something. I don't have money, man. I'm sorry. Thank you. I share tips to handle such situations, suggesting a firm no and walking away. In a different scam, I reveal how tourists might fall for it. In the heart of Milan, at the magnificent Duomo, a clever scam unfolds. A group of scammers targets unsuspecting tourists with a devious plan. They approach visitors, offering bird feed for the pigeons or forcing it into their hands to capture candid photographs. The tourists, feeling uneasy, protest that they lack money. The scammers insist it's merely three euros for the photos, but in reality, they take multiple shots, inflating the cost. One man, determined to uncover the truth, investigates and learns about the three euro rate. He leaves his wallet with his wife and approaches the first photographer with his own three euros. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh. Also, uh, also, no problem, of course. All right, all right. Guarda. Guarda. Sit down. Too many, too many, too many. Grosso, grosso, it's all this area. Set venti. Set venti. Sorry, English? Venti. Venti. Twenty. Uh, you said three. Set the photo, one. Bellissimo. One. One. I just want one photo. Very good. Yeah, but you said three. What been? Well, set the photo, okay? Pardon? Set the photo. One photo. Set it on. I don't understand you. Seven pictures. Seven. 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 Okay. Well, I only got I only got three three euros in change. Dami tre. Dami tre. No mama, no papa, no mama, no papa. No tengo más. Mohammed. After some negotiation. The scammer reluctantly provides a single printed photo. Unexpectedly, a confrontation ensues between the photographer and his friend, leaving the tourist taken aback. So I don't feel like I was scammed, right? Three euros and I got a photo by a guy with a printer. That was not the result I expected. What the hell? Despite the unexpected outcome, the tourist reflects on his experience realizing he managed to acquire a photo for a fair price, though not without some unexpected twists. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. In this 10-minute video snippet, we're going to uncover how individuals snatch valuables from cars. The events unfold over a two-hour period as we closely watch these culprits. The main guy, the driver, is busy pretending to chat on his cell phone. He inspects one car, then another. He's crafty, wearing a yellow jacket often used by cross-border travelers. They usually carry laptops and cameras. He hops back into his car, maintaining a watchful eye. Next, a guy in a white shirt approaches. 
He's got a button in his hand, earning him the name Buttons. Driver heads towards the back while they both scope the scene. They use their car as their base, keeping an eye out for potential victims or the police. They move back and forth, never straying far from the car. The third guy, who we'll call Richard, joins them. They're like a team of thieves. They approach cars, looking for easy targets. They stay cautious, glancing around for customers or police officers. They don't linger too long, around 10 to 15 minutes per spot. When a potential victim appears, Buttons checks if the car's open while pretending to walk past it. He acts casual, even acting like he forgot something, before they swoop in to steal. Their maneuvers are like a spider's web luring unsuspecting prey. When they sense police presence, they make a quick exit. They're unsure if they're being sought after, so they move on to another area. But they circle back, pretending their car has issues. Driver fakes starting the car while Richard keeps a lookout. During lunchtime, they even head to a shop to steal some food. It's all part of their game. Then, they head to the checkout, where Buttons swipes a slip from the counter while Driver acts busy on his phone. With stolen items in hand, they exit. Eventually, the security catches them. They're apprehended, and though they appear in court the next day, they're released with fines. These three, Driver, Buttons, and Richard, are now known. Let's hope this story teaches them a lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.